Did you know you can engage students in interactive science lessons using LEGO motorized and sensorized devices without using computers, tablets or stressful prep? This is the promise of the new LEGO Education Science Kits. It seems too good to be true. And I was so curious, I couldn't wait until August 2025. So I headed to the Didacta Fair to try it in preview and now I'll share everything I discovered with you, including the detailed set inventory. Let's begin. LEGO Education Science is an upcoming hands-on learning solution designed to engage K-8 students in science. It offers over 120 lessons that connect students to scientific phenomena, fostering creativity, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills. Each kit includes colorful LEGO bricks and interactive hardware. I'll skip on the kit details as you can read them directly from the LEGO website. I'll put a link below. So, there are three new kits, with increasingly big assortment of LEGO bricks. Besides the usual LEGO bricks in a weird color palette, there are some new molds and some recolors of existing elements. A 2x2 dual molded rubber plate with coral pink studs that lets you add grippy feet to your base plates. A brick that can hold a card or a photo that existed in different shapes in some LEGO dot sets, if I remember well. Hard round wheels, maybe they're not new, just that I've not seen them before. Some plates, which seem to come from Super Mario sets, but I'm not sure they are new. Besides the colorful LEGO elements, the new parts that I was really curious to learn more about were the electronic parts. The double motor, it resembles a lot the LEGO Boost Hub, included in all three kits. The controller reminds me of the LEGO Controller 88010, included in the 8 Plus and 11 Plus kits. The single motor and the color sensor included only in the 11 Plus kit. Here's what's new about these devices. No programming is needed. No computers or tablets are needed to make them work, letting teachers hold unplugged lessons. You can scan the connection cards, they're made in plastic, they embed their technology like NFC or RFID, by placing them near the RGB LED button of a sensor or a motor device to pair them and let the input control the output device. And all of this without wires. It means that each device has a built-in battery to charge, and that's why LEGO will sell you also this new USB charger caterpillar that lets you charge 8 devices at a time. You can even connect an input to several outputs, for example to control a swarm of robots to dance in sync, or activate the movement of several creatures with a flip of a switch, or by showing a colored brick to one single color sensor. I didn't try connecting an input device to another input device, but I don't think this would make any sense. But the interesting fact is that the motor devices can work as standalone. You can give their shafts a hint of a movement and they will keep moving on their own. A bit like the Lego Duper train that moves when you push it and reacts to colored tags encountered along its rail. Watch how the double motor keeps moving after being pushed or how the single motor shaft moves after I rotate this by hand. Is this a revolution? Mm, not really. Lego Interactive Hardware is not a totally new idea. In 2003, LEGO released the Record and Play set, which included a smart brick with built-in motors that could record and replay the actions you were performing with it. But let's continue with the report. During the morning at the Didacta Fair in Florence, we had a chance to get a small demo lesson by a trainer. I went to my friends at C2 Group, an Italian LEGO education distributor. We tried the Soapbox car lesson. Here's another discovery. The building instructions are laid out in such a way that four students can collaborate in the building process so that a kid can be shared among four students, so you can save a bit of money. Hmm. Each student picks a color minifigure, yellow, red, green, blue, and assembles what the left page shows them. Next, in the right pages, they put together their single contribution into the whole model. Another cool thing is that each lesson, and there are 40 for each kit, is designed to be carried out in 30-45 minutes, including the cleanup phase at the end. And that's a good thing because usually, the lessons designed by LEGO tend to take much more time than designed, after a quick build, we ended up with a basic soapbox car and a remote control barrier to let the car roll downhill. It was time to test our hypothesis on how to make the soapbox car be the one to travel farther and associated this with the slope of the tilted plane. The lid of the box itself is designed to become a tilted plane. It has three notches to try different slopes. I had the chance to sniff some Bluetooth packets and after filtering them it appears that the commands follow a new protocol and not the usual LEGO Wireless Protocol 3.0, which underlies the whole powered up ecosystem. I really hope LEGO will allow us developers to expand the system of wireless devices, which has a great potential. 
especially if you think all of those motors and color sensor being connectable wirelessly to the Lego Spike Prime or Essential Hub, and I'm thinking of Fibrix programming of course, I would love to see the whole set of the four new devices featured in a kit for domestic use or a different combination of those devices into Lego City sets to make a new smart Lego set like it happened to the excellent Lego Boost Creative Toolbox back in 2018, used together with Ninjago or a roller coaster set. But those are just my dreams. Since these devices are not programmable yet, this reassured me at least that LEGO Spike Prime and LEGO Spike Essential won't be discontinued too soon. I would rather hope that LEGO will add new programming blocks to the LEGO Spike app to let our Spike robot to use those wireless sensors and motors. How cool would it be? What would you like LEGO to do with these devices? Comment below. So, should you buy it? Well, if you or your school already got Spike sets with a little extra work, I'm pretty sure the lessons plans could be adapted to the kits you already have. If you don't have any of those robotics kits or if you are a very busy teacher and want a classroom ready lessons, this is something you really might want to explore. Being focused on helping kids learn programming and become problem solvers, I'm not sure I will buy one of those sets. If a Lego Education distributor or Lego Education itself would kindly send me one for review, I would be glad to try squeezing out all of its potential or hack it further to try controlling them from a computer. My report is not complete yet. Here are the parts lists for the 5 plus and 8 plus sets. The better version of the 11 plus set booklet missed the build of materials, unfortunately. While we wait for these kits to arrive, let's keep playing with LEGO robots. If you want some inspiration for your next LEGO robotics creation, watch this next.